An inquest into the life estimeni tragedy will be held from tomorrow. The inquest will determine if anyone can be held criminally liable for the tragedy in which at least 144 mental health patients died. After a contract between the Gauteng Health Department and the Life Estimeni Group in 2015 was terminated, the department moved the patients to non-governmental facilities. But due to neglect, dehydration and hunger, they died between March and December 2016. Some went missing when they were moved and uh, have still not been found. We speak now to Julia Chaskelson, who's communications officer for Section 27. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us, Julia. It has taken quite a while for us to reach this point. Why is it? So thank you for having me and good evening to your, to your viewers at home. What we've seen is that there was a process of fact finding and the National Prosecuting Authority was trying to gather evidence to take this case, take the case of the Life is a Domini tragedy forward. And in 2019, the NPA announced that they didn't have enough evidence to lay charges against the people responsible for the tragedy, which was part of the reason why um, a joint judicial inquest was announced. So what this represents is a continuation of the kind of justice process to get justice for the 144 people who died in the Life is a Many tragedy, um, and also for their families who are seeking closure and seeking peace. And Section 27 is representing the families of the deceased in the upcoming inquest tomorrow, which will be heard before Judge Tefel. And what Judge Tefel is going to do is the judge will be presented with evidence and will make determinations about the legal cause of death of each of the 144 mental health care users who passed away in the tragedy. And from this, it is hoped that we can find kind of evidence of criminal liability, whether it's criminal action or neglect or omission on behalf of, uh, on, on the part of high ranking health officials in the Gauteng Department of Health, um, but also all the way down to the individual NGOs who, who took the mental health care patients in when they weren't prepared, staffed or resourced to do so. So we hope that this will bring justice and, and, and closure for the families. And it represents a kind of step towards getting criminal accountability for those who were responsible for this tragedy. Mm. Now, there was an arbitration process under Justice Musaneke, which awarded families uh, monies for what they went through. Uh, could that not be used in some sort of premise for uh, arguing criminal liability because uh, if there was a wrong to have been found where compensation was then awarded, surely the two are linked. Sure. So in, in, in 2018, when former Deputy Chief Justice Dick Mos uh, Dikhan Mosaneke made his award, um, each of the families of the deceased received 1.2 million rand in common law damages and constitutional damages. And evidence from that arbitration is going to be brought before the inquest over the coming weeks. Unfortunately, none of the kind of high ranking officials or NGO owners took real individual responsibility for their involvement in the tragedy. There were some utterances made about, you know, each passed the blame onto somebody else or claimed ignorance and claimed that they couldn't have known that this was going to happen, despite the fact that there were numerous warnings from doctors and healthcare professionals, from lawyers, from the families themselves and patient support groups, which said that the move from life is a into these unprepared and unlicensed and under-resourced NGOs was a highly risky one. So despite all of these warnings, all of the responsible parties have kind of claimed ignorance and passed the blame, passed the buck. And we're hoping that evidence from the arbitration will be brought forward in this inquest to show essentially kind of that there was involvement at all sorts of levels from the individual NGO owners and the people who work there all the way up throughout the Gauteng Department of Health. Um, so evidence from the arbitration will indeed be used in the inquest, and we're hoping that this kind of contributes to, towards the process of getting criminal accountability for everyone involved, including the public officials who, who, whose hands are bloody in this, in this tragedy. Mm. And is there hope that the National Prosecuting Authority will then subpoena some high-ranking government officials in order uh, to secure a position that then leads to this criminal liability that is being sought? 
Right. So we don't know which witnesses or which of the high-ranking government officials are going to be subpoenaed to appear. We're hoping to get clarity on that over the course of this week. Um, we're, we're going to hear from the evidence leader who is a prosecutor called um, Advocate Peter Late. We're going to get more information about which evidence... Uh, which witnesses are going to be brought forward to give evidence at the inquest. And we're hoping that that extends all the way throughout all the levels of government of people who are involved, because ultimately this wasn't a tragedy that happened because of one person's mistake. There was collective responsibility for, for, for the death and therefore we need collective accountability and criminal accountability for the deaths that occurred. So... We're, we're hoping that, you know, some of the kind of former members of the Gauteng Department of Health are brought forward, but we haven't got confirmation about who will be subpoenaed to appear just yet. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Julia Chaskelson is Communications Officer for Section 27, speaking about that inquest uh, into the life as a tragedy, which starts tomorrow.